so with that, let me turn to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Ramesh, uh, former DG of the Indian Meteorological Department, uh, to talk to us a little bit more about uh, the climate science. And as Dr. Jairaman mentioned, a little bit more around the story of uh, black carbon and short-lived climate forces, including methane. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Professor Patwadan and uh, respected uh, Dr. Naik and uh, other distinguished panelists. I'll be uh, sharing about uh, about the challenges and opportunities of uh, climate change impacts on the monsoon circulation. Somehow my screen is not coming. Tejal, you have to help me. You have to, uh, don't share the screen, share the presentation. So you can browse and uh, uh, go to the presentation, wherever it is, and share it. Or keep the presentation open before you share the screen. Yeah, I've already opened the presentation. Uh, I Start. hope I am unshared. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, please, sir. please do that. You have stopped sharing, but uh, yes, I have uh, stopped. Yes, doc, Dr. Ramesh, can you try uh, just once if you go to yeah, the yeah, share no, no, tray? No, 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 I'll browse and go to the location and open the presentation. That should work if it doesn't. I don't know, it is not opening. I can share uh, since I have the presentation and have your presentation with me. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe Tejal, if you can share. Yeah. Yes, so that we save more time. Uh, Thank you. Uh, whatever uh, Professor Jeraman has briefed, uh, the monsoon has been impacted by climate change, and we are fortunate uh, uh, to see that uh, we are blessed with. Uh, more moisture loading into the monsoon atmosphere uh, during the time leading uh, uh, one degree warming and crossing over uh, one degree warming reaching up to 1.1 and 1.2 degrees currently. And that is the one good positive aspect of it uh, as far as the monsoon circulation is concerned. And I'll I hope you can see the presentation. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Let me know when you want to respond. Yeah, we Next can slide. go to we can go to the second slide, please. Yes. So here, uh, two headline uh, messages are there. One from the World Meteorological Organization uh, says that while we reach 1.5 degree warming, uh, loss of food production, the impacts of the biosphere and world economy are only a few negative prospects of continued global warming. While uh, impacts are there, extreme weather events, uh, frequency, intensity are increasing with more uh, warming. Warming allows atmosphere to hold more and more moisture. So uh, as assessed from IPCC, with one point, uh, uh, close to 1.2 degree warming now, uh, atmosphere can hold 7% more moisture. Uh, water holding capacity has increased by 7% compared to earlier. So in terms of uh, uh, the message uh, from uh, the Valerie of uh, IPCC uh, working group one, she says that uh, planet is heading for two degrees warming by mid century, 2030 or A uh, lot of uh, extreme actions are required uh, to dampen uh, the warming by the end of the century and to stay within 1.5 degree warming. Next slide, please. So although we have uh, uh, committed to minimize the warming by two degrees by 2100, uh, a lot of decisions have to be taken in upcoming uh, international meetings uh, to accelerate the all climate uh, uh, necessary actions, particularly uh, leading to uh, net zero emissions and decarbonization and so many other things which are uh, 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 listed in the uh, 
opportunities to minimize the warming by 2100. But impacts will continue to increase despite whatever actions are taken. So that's what is to be kept in mind. Uh, even if global warming is limited uh, by two, 2 degrees by 2100, so that is not going to be avoided. Next one, please. So globally, we have recognized that uh, out of the 10 global risks, even by the World Economic Forum identified five of 10 are related to uh, weather and climate and climate related action and on the impacts. Next one, please. So that is the next 10 years, the risk minimization becomes the high priority. That's where, uh, that is part of the adaptation action, risk management, risk uh, minimization and impact minimization effective response to extreme weather events becomes very very important so this is one particular uh, new uh, uh, outcome which has come just last week it says that south asia is almost eight times uh, 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 in for impacts compared to uh, the europe for example so this is a very in terms of gdp losses uh, due to extreme weather impacts so 10 times more exposed to europe south asia so south asia is a hotbed of uh, uh, impacts uh, with the increased frequency intensity of extreme weather events and with the monsoon so much of loading of monsoon uh, moisture is there next one please So another important change which is driving the global circulation changes are thinning of uh, uh, Arctic ice. So this is one of the reason, as you all know, uh, thinning of ice will allow more uh, Arctic waters to absorb uh, solar radiation, which used to be uh, opposite to the scenario in the previous decades. So the, uh, the absorbed heat in the Arctic uh, uh, polar waters in particular is going to drive much more uh, uh, rapid unanticipated circulation changes in the northern hemisphere atmosphere so which we will have to wait and see one of the impacts which we are already seeing is uh, the accelerated warming uh, early warming signals in the europe and as well as uh, uh, tropics monsoonal india where summer is there next one please So this is the March temperature anomaly for 2022. You can clearly see um, warming over Arctic and warming over Asia are competing to each other. So this is the new uh, circulation change, which is going to drive uh, uh, the new forcing, which is going to drive the circulation changes in future. You can clearly see in March 18th, you have seen 38.5 degrees uh, uh, anomaly of temperature recorded in uh, Antarctic. Next one, please. Number of disasters definitely are on increase and that trend is going to continue as it was uh, uh, mentioned and strongly uh, sent out message of IPCC. Next one. So with the early warning systems improvement, a lot of uh, uh, mortalities reduction, loss of life reduction has taken place now but that is not enough now uh, um, you can see uh, the increase in the economic losses and asset infrastructure losses due to uh, extreme weather events and uh, that is related to hunger also because of food production will uh, uh, also get uh, uh, impacted and demand for more food will be there because of droughts and floods which will be there in different parts of the country so monsoon is going to be better but other areas will have a dry weather so food shortages can be there so food price index and the economic classes are the two factors which we will have to keep in mind while building adaptation actions next one please so this is a very important thing which i want to draw your attention for last 30 years, three decades, you can clearly see total uh, column water vapor has been uh, increasing on the monsoonal Asia, South Asia, particularly in particular. So in term, that is reflected in terms of uh, rainfall uh, in the downward uh, uh, panel. So rainfall also, we have positive anomaly for last uh, um, uh, 30 years. 
and slowly that has trend has started from uh, 1980 you will show in subsequent diagrams this is a big change that has happened from 1980 uh, compared to other areas you can see so many areas where uh, moisture is less but uh, as far as uh, monsoon is concerned uh, south asia is concerned in particular and uh, we are seeing a different phenomena it is a blessing for us this is an opportunity next one so if you see the temperature changes uh, um, uh, right from 1951 to 2016 you get a different anomaly pattern over india if you take uh, anomaly temperature anomaly for last 30 years you will get a different uh, mixed zones of warming and cooling uh, patterns uh, for the last three decades if you see climate change is always seen changes uh, uh, happening in last 30 years so last uh, if you see 70 years change to 30 year change is a big difference of uh, warming and cooling which is taking place in the india uh, next one please this is another factor our manifestation of impacts will be different because of this similarly if you see the uh, rainfall anomalies for 70 years up to from 1951 and last 30 years you can see most of the areas except uh, uh, up and uh, northern part of uh, uh, madhya pradesh and uh, uh, chhattisgarh and remaining most of the areas excluding northeast is going to be deficit many of the areas are having uh, above normal uh, uh, rainfall uh, scenario particularly northwest india that's how we are seeing more uh, extreme events uh, uh, leading to local floods in gujarat and uh, uh, rajasthan next one please so this is a particular uh, uh, diagram uh, which i want to draw all uh, uh, of your attention you can clearly see here from 1980 onwards this is an observed pattern rainfall over the monsoon region started increasing and that is going to be continued even uh, up to 2100 in all ssps uh, assessed by uh, cmip6 models so this is one of the robust signal which we are uh, seeing. This is not only seen here, it is confirmed in AR6. We have seen similar projections uh, in 1.5 report and as well as AR5 report. Next one, please. And with the background of uh, uh, the warming and cooling, uh, main message coming out uh, here is the whole basket of aerosols, carbonaceous and non-carbonaceous aerosols put together uh, contribute to a net cooling of about 0.3 to 0.4 degrees to the overall warming of the planet Earth. So this is a big message uh, uh, coming out of uh, ER6. And this came with a lot of uh, uh, efforts at UNFCC level and Substar level pushing uh, IPCC to assess all the aerosols put together individually and uh, assess the resultant warming effect or cooling effect, net effect we wanted to have. Ultimately, we got this message um, because only the black carbon was flagged to be as uh, uh, accelerated or prioritized uh, emission reduction effort by the negotiation uh, uh, agenda. So that was, uh, uh, we tried our best to stop that to be pushed into action. And then ultimately R6 assessed and brought out uh, that uh, aerosols ultimately contributing to the net cooling, particularly uh, the net effect of organic carbon and uh, uh, black carbon put together is going to be uh, zero. So that is another uh, big message which has come out of uh, this assessment report of ER6. Next one, please. So this is the black carbon uh, diagram uh, which used to uh, be shown to us and tell that this is going to do so much damage in the monsoonal area and all. So that has all got demystified now. Next one, please. So these are uh, important things which are uh, mentioned here. Clearly, the summary of this I have uh, uh, noted already more than one degree warming has taken place. So atmosphere is already hotter um, uh, by 1.2 uh, degrees centigrade. And that has contributed to 2.8 times increase in the in intensity and frequency of uh, hot weather uh, heat waves particularly. So heat waves are already increased by about 2.8 times compared to earlier. Similarly, 
with other uh, degrees of warming that will increase uh, uh, so much uh, up to um, four degrees. Uh, next one, please. In terms of uh, uh, increase uh, in rainfall, you can clearly see with one degree warming, 6.7% wetter of uh, monsoon atmosphere or overall uh, atmosphere, so to say, monsoon atmosphere will be much more than this. It will be almost 10 to 15% increase in monsoon atmosphere uh, loading is there. And if you go to individual cases like cyclones, uh, thunderstorms, uh, uh, etc., uh, leading to heavy rainfall, leading to riverine floods, local floods, their moisture loading is much higher uh, than this. Next one, please. So, um, uh, summary is uh, we have clearly got demystification of uh, uh, the black carbon effects. Uh, it is clearly says observed warming to date has been driven by greenhouse gas emissions, roughly third of which is masked by the cooling from um, aerosol emissions. In particular, contribution from the net warming by black carbon uh, and uh, uh, the organic carbon is assessed to be close to zero although one third of observed warming is masked by cooling. Hence, net warming from the short-lived carbonaceous aerosols comprising EC and OC together need to be considered as a combined effect of net warming or cooling to the global warming, rather than bringing out only BC or any other species for consideration of emission reduction or urgent actions. Next one, please. With every incremental warming, changes get larger and larger in the regional mean precipitation and soil moisture pattern. So, which you have seen uh, in the earlier uh, diagram. Uh, next one, please. So, here clearly 1.1 1 .1 degree warming uh, we will take us uh, uh, to increase in heat waves by 2.8 times, 2 degree, 1.5 degree warming to 4.1 times. 2 degree warming to about uh, 5.6 times increase in the heat wave intensity and frequency. Similarly, with 4 degree, it will go to 9.4. In terms of precipitation increase, 1 degree warming will increase our one day pre maximum precipitation by about 1.5 uh, times, 1.3 times. And with 1.5 degree warming, one day precipitation intensity will increase by 1.5 times. Similarly, 2 degrees warming to 1.7 times. Uh, so on and so forth. So next one, please. So we we are going to see uh, the change of uh, intensity and uh, uh, frequency uh, uh, in a different manner. This what particular plot will tell you. These are the uh, locations where heavy rainfall days are there during the decade of 1991 to 2000. Next one is from 2000 to 2010 and 2011 to 2020. If you see for each of the three recent decades, number of days of heavy rainfall recorded has been varying so strongly from district to district um, all through the year, mostly dominated during the monsoon season. So this is sort of variability of heavy rainfall moving one place to another place all over uh, the monsoonal domain. So this is what is uh, the reason and uncertainty in early challenges to the early warning systems. That's where uh, we have to have more advanced models and new um, parameterization schemes to uh, predict the intense precipitation at local levels. And then that can uh, minimize the impacts ultimately with good responses. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramesh. I mean, really, again, a lot of information to digest. But the one thing I think that really struck me was your point about the consistency of the uh, projections with regard to intensification of monsoon. And as you said, that presents an opportunity, but also a challenge from an adaptation perspective if we have to manage that. Uh, uh, manage that. Uh, one request before I hand over to the next speaker, please, if you have any questions or comments, uh, could you please send them to nias.ipcc at gmail.com.